My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today, we will continue the inventory menu that we started in uh, chapter number 42. So the previous tutorial. Um, so far, what we did, we displayed this grid of cells when we pause the game and every cell is associated to one item and we display the one that the player has. For example, here I have the bow, but I don't have the life potion. Um, so we'll continue that. How, what we will do exactly? So first we will uh, have a look at the existing code and just refactor it a little bit to, to improve um, a couple of things. Then we will also add a sound actually when we pause the game because we forgot to do that last time. And we will add the more important, more importantly, we will add the cursor that will be able to, to move, to select one cell. And yeah, so that later we can indeed associate items to our items, item icons there. Um, okay, cool. So let's start with having a look at the code just to refresh your memory. Um, here. We are in this script postmenu.lua that has only one function actually, and this function creates a pause menu for the specified game. So the pause menu is a table here, is actually a, it will be a menu, and we define the event on draw that is called at every frame to redraw the menu on the screen, and what we do is that we display the grid on the screen. So all gray squares here with that items and then we draw the items so one small optimization that we should do is to actually maybe um, draw the items only once like we did for the grid actually because it is very unlikely it's actually even impossible because the game is paused so it's impossible during the paused state that the player obtains more items or shoot shoots uh, arrows for, for instance. So what we want is to probably avoid um, calling this draw items function at every frame because it does a, a loop on, on all items. So that it's a little bit stupid because the result will always be the same at every frame during uh, the pause state. So yeah, let's start with doing a little bit of refactoring to avoid that. Uh, we have grid surface here. Uh, for now, it, it only contains the what we call the background, so the gray squares that are here. But we could also simply add the items there. Um, so what we want is actually to declare a grid surface here, but every time the pause menu is started, we will build the background so probably by passing the grid surface as parameter. Um, yeah, we will recreate this surface, not anymore in this function, but here. And because we will also need it in the second function. So I create it here when we create uh, the pause menu. But yeah, if you want to really be really, really accurate, we can call build grid background uh, when we create the pause menu. Um, sorry, no. When Every time the pause menu is started, so every time the player pauses the game again, we uh, draw the grid, so the, the gray squares, and then we draw the items on grid surface for this game. So basically this function here. So we no longer call it here, we call it there. Maybe you want to call it build items instead of draw items, because the name draw, usually we use it more for things that are drawn every frame, but it's just one convention that you might like or not. 
Anyway, we will build the items uh, there. Grid surface. Um, okay. So the, the main difference is that grid, before it was the screen here. So it has it has the whole size of the screen. And now it's just the grid surface. It only has the, the size that contains our 20 gray squares. So uh, I need to update this. And actually, it will simplify the code. We no longer need the DSTX here. And there. Um, oops, sorry, we do. But it's here that we need, we can just initialize them to zero, zero. Okay, cool. But we draw them at these coordinates, grid X, grid, grid Y. It's very similar to what we did there. Um, yeah, we could also probably simplify and, and kind of merge these two functions. In every step of our loop here, we can draw both the square and the item, actually. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm only realizing this now, but uh, let's go, let's do that. Is it that simple? Okay, so I did a lot of refactoring. Okay, I only see two squares now. Um, I'm not sure why. Oh, because I only have two items in my list here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> in a real game, we would fill the whole list of 20 items. Um, so, okay, let's undo, undo just for now, but it's, it's, it's interesting to note that we could just merge and simplify the code. Instead of doing two loops, we can do the whole thing in just one pass. Anyway, that's it for this small refactoring. Uh, oh, I have an error now when I pause the game while having the bow. Number 47. It's not no longer called DST surface, but grid surface. Because it's no longer the screen, but it's the grid surface. Okay. So the screen has the whole size of the screen, of the game screen. And the grid surface only has the necessary size to contain the 20 squares. Okay. Oh, uh, there is something wrong with transparency here. Um, set opacity. Uh, what did I do wrong again? <laughs> because here is correct, but the second time it's, it, it became bad. I create a surface here. Oh, okay. I I should first clear the surface before redrawing it when I pause the game again. Yeah, because I created it only once. But I'm reusing the same pause menu every time. So on started is called again every time I pause the game. But this was not. Okay, th that was a small mistake, but kind of subtle. Okay, cool. Um, also, I want to save the game. Um, I can do that by just typing here. And if you didn't know or didn't remember that you can just type some Lua here using the Solaris API, 
That's very good to know. Just to debug your game more easily. So I saved with the bow. And if I run the game again, I still have the bow. OK, it works. Finally, uh, we can have fun now. Let's add some sound when we pause the game. So here. Um, or probably from the code that that calls uh, that triggers the pause menu because I don't think it's the job of the pause menu itself to to play a sound uh, when it starts but again as you want so probably here in my game manager so I have a sound uh, pause open and another one Pause closed, I think. Let's see. Pause open and closed. Okay, cool. Okay, great. Fun, funny little sounds. Okay, ne the next step is to display a cursor. Um, which will give more life to our our menu here. So I have this sprite uh, called Menus Inventory Selector. Um, it comes from the Trillium resource pack, so you can download it if you want, or you can make your own, or find any sprite for uh, from another game, as you want, really. So here, if you want to import the one from Trillium, it's two files, cursor.png and selector.dat. So the PNG and the sprite sheet information itself is just a small cursor that, uh, um, yeah, with these colors here. Um, so let's create the cursor when uh, the pause menu is created. So to me, the cursor is something that it's a sprite. It's an animated sprite, so it has a state and that's why I, I don't put it here, because all of this is completely constant. So even if the script was used for multiple games, multiple pause menus, I know it's impossible, but if it was, um, they would have their own cursor sprites, but they would all have the same uh, constants. Okay. That's really, really a small uh, detail. OK, let's create the sprite. So it's called menus slash inventory slash selector. Cool. And we want to display it this time uh, at every frame because its state will change since it's an animated sprite um, every 150 milliseconds, its frame will, will change. So we just want to redraw it at every frame on the screen. So where? Let's try first grid X and grid Y and see what happens. So it's there, it's animated, but it's not correctly centered because that's actually it's bigger than the squares. So we need to offset it a little bit. And how much? So its size is 32, 32, but our squares are 24 by 24. So we want to do probably grid, grid X minus four and grid Y minus four. Okay, and now we just have to implement something that will allow to move it. So finally, the interesting stuff, maybe, uh, yeah, probably something to learn for you. Um, okay, so I will, I will need some variable to remember the position of the cursor on the screen. So cursor X and cursor Y. Um, let's start with zero, 0, but we will actually make a function that um, computes them. Uh, 
Um, we can remember the, the row and column of the cursor and compute this from the current row and current column. So with a function that will be called, uh, for instance, update cursor. So what does this function do? It will uh, recompute the the coordinates of the cursor. When we when we change the row or the column. Um, so how do we compute that? So cursor x should be. Uh, we saw that when we are at 0, 0, it should be grid, grid x minus 4. And then we just have to, to add uh, so the, the column multiplied by whatever width of one column is. And that's uh, square size. Maybe you should put this in a variable square size plus spacing because we compute it at various places already, but it's always the same. Um, and I think that's it. And same for the vertical position. Grid Y, cursor row, square size plus spacing. Okay, perfect. And now I just need to call that function whenever I decide to change the row or column of my cursor. Um, I need to call it one first time for sure when the pause menu starts based on that. And then how do we actually implement uh, reacting to to co some commands to move the cursor. Um, so in the API of menus and of um, a lot of types actually, game, map, we have all these input events. On key pressed, these are for uh, keyboard events. Uh, we have joypad events, mouse events, finger events, and, and what we call commands. So comments are more high level uh, events that are actually mapped to some underlying low level keyboard or joypad events. And comments can be action, attack, pause, and so on. Um, by the way, I don't know why I'm in the gain type, but it's the same for menu. On comment pressed. Um, see the game API for the list of comments. So that's why I was in, in the game file, uh, in the game page. Anyway, we have these possible command. For instance, we have the command action, uh, which, which is spaced by default and it's used to open chest, to talk, to swim and so on. Um, and it's, yeah, like I said, it's always mapped to an underlying low level keyboard or joypad event, or both, um, and most of our, uh, most of our games, I mean, all our, our games have a menu that allows the player to configure these comments. Um, but that's completely out of scope of, of this tutorial. The only thing I want is to react to comments uh, right, left, up, down, to just move my cursor. But I, I, so my point is that I don't react directly to keyboard keys or joypad events, but doing it here from uh, on command pressed, we'll just react both to keyboard and joypad by default. And on top of that will be configurable. Um, okay, so we'll talk more about this command system in other tutorials. There are some limitations and the most important one is that uh, the list of commands is, is limited. But there are always some ways to 
to do your own stuff on top of all of that. Okay, uh, so back to the actual tutorial. What we want is to react to high level commands. Oops, pause menu. On command pressed. Command. So if the command is right, which again can be in reality a, either a keyboard or a joypad action, um, well, we just increment our cursor column. And let's say end for now. Maybe we will play a sound. I think we have a cool cursor sound in the default pack. Cursor and we increment the column. We'll see what happens when we reach the last column and we'll fix it. But first let's, te let's test <laughs> like this. Okay, it doesn't work because I forgot to recompute the actual coordinates based on the, the row and column. And to do that, I had to call my little update function. Okay, it works. So of course it will go too far to the right because I didn't check for the, the limit. Uh, what we want is probably to go back to the left one when we uh, exceed the, the last one to the right. And how do we do that? We can do a condition here with an if then else, but we can also use the modulo operator. Um, if you are familiar with this, I think it's much more concise and much cleaner. And it works. Um, okay, so we we have everything we want for right. Now we just need to do the other ones. So maybe we want to do left now because it will be almost the same code except that this time we decrease. And the modular operator will still work well uh, even with negative numbers. So if cursor column becomes minus one, minus one modulo five in loi will be four. So it works. And then uh, same thing for up and down. Um, maybe I will still want to respect the convention, the order of the actions. Uh, that is the convention is Solaris. Right, up, left, down. Why not? So if we press up, we do cursor row is cursor row minus one modulo. Oh, sorry, I don't want to put modulo five here, but I have a constant that is called num columns. And then our code will work even if you decide to change one day the number of rows and columns. So num rows, num rows, num columns, num columns. Okay, up is down. It's done, it's not, it's not down. <laughs> uh, and plus one for the down direction. And that should just work, hopefully. Perfect, yay! I have a nice inventory menu that I can navigate. Um, so we'll stop for today, because I don't want tutorials to be one hour long. There are still a lot more to do, uh, to have uh, a full inventory menu. What we will want, uh, probably in the next tutorial, is to display the, the name of the selected item when there is one. Maybe display it here with some text. Uh, it's interesting to know how to do that. Probably you already know, you can try. Um, um, what else? We, we want, of course, to... The, the main feature will be to associate uh, so our items here to one of the two item slots. And one more thing to do, uh, I think I mentioned it, mentioned it already in a previous tutorial, but we haven't done it yet, is to display the amount of items for 
for the items that have an amount because it's not the, usually the case of all items and yeah so i think i know what to do to prepare for for you for the next tutorial and until then uh, have a good time and see you bye